office for the visit. But you identified my office and you identified my title, and I note that you said it so menacingly. You know, it's not it's not that menacing, of course. It's you know, our job is to help build capacity so that communities themselves can get involved in this effort. You know, the, the, there's a counterterrorism space where it's definitely government focused, but there's also um, in this countering violent extremism space where communities need to understand the issue and understand how they can get involved so that they can help address the problem without it ever getting to a law enforcement perspective. Are you here to encourage uh, Muslims to spy on each other of in course the mosques? Not. Of course not. I mean, that's not what we're talking about here. This, if this effort and what we're doing here is, you know, we have a team down here working to help assess and advise uh, locals as well as the government on what can be done here. Um, as you know, there's, there's sort of been a rise of, of individuals around the world uh, going to foreign conflict zones to fight. And, and we're losing kids, you know, uh, kids are dying out there. Um, parents are losing their children. And as a father of, of, of two daughters, uh, I worry about my kids just like anybody else does. And I want to make sure that they're raised in a safe environment. They're not, uh, they're not uh, demonized in any way, shape, or form. And that we're all working together to, uh, for a common good. But how is that achieved? Because, I mean, uh, it, it, it's no coincidence that you're here. Because let, let, let's not be true. It's known that Trinidad and Tobago has, has a disproportionate number of people who have gone to Syria to fight. I lost a cousin in October of last year who went to Syria to fight. I'm sorry to hear a that. A first cousin. Uh, and and, and, and there, there continues to be that very, very strong belief mm -hmm. among members of the Muslim community, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but in other parts of the world, that this is legitimate. Uh, and, 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 and I know you're not here to speak as an Islamic theologian. That's right. But that, 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 that is a strongly held view in, in, in sermons and khutbahs and in mosques on a Friday in various parts of Trinidad and Tobago. That position is strongly advocated that if you do not answer this call mm -hmm. to join and be part of the caliphate, whether it involves fighting or offering your professional services in some way, shape or form, you are abdicating your role as a Muslim. How do you counter that? Well, so, you know, that's, that is, is one of the things we're trying to counter. Um, and what we're doing here, like I said, is working with government and, and as well as uh, local individuals. And we had a, a nice conversation with uh, a lot of individuals in the Muslim community. And, uh, and you know, to be, to be honest, I was a bit surprised to find out that there was this, uh, you know, number of individuals from a place like Trinidad and Tobago going over. So when you, when you talk about this issue with them, there is this sort of reticence to understand what the issue is, because partly... Um, there is this other side of the coin that says this is part of your, you know, jihad, your faith. And what we've done is, you know, as we talk to theologians around the world, and as you said, I'm not an Islamic theologian in any way, shape, or form, but what they are telling us is that this is an incorrect interpretation. This is misinformation, or what I like to say, it's disinformation. That is not the true way of getting individuals to, 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 to live their life as a Muslim. Uh, this is not... Um, um, what they think they're getting themselves into. And it's our job, I think, as government officials to get that information out, to say that what you think is going to happen over there is not reality. And once we get that information out, I think it's, uh, it's up to communities themselves to talk to kids, to talk to themselves, and then build that resilience so that they can push back rather than just leaving it to government all the time. Well, let me give you the counterpoint, which I'm sure you would have heard many times, but for, for the benefit of our viewers locally, that... that what is being presented by yourself and others who talk about the the distortion of, of the, the message of the, 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 the role of Muslims, it's actually a distortion on the part of Western governments, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Western media. That the, the other, the counterpoint is that it is nowhere as demonic as it is being presented by Western media and advocated by the government of the United States and it is indeed far more enlightened and progressive than, than is being presented. And basically, your job is to do the American administration's bidding to keep Muslims in that perennial state of subjugation. <laughs> wow. Um, is, it, is it okay to curse on the show and say that's BS? Because, you know, absolutely not. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, there, there's, there's, there's news, there's fake news, and then there's reality. And, you know, from our perspective, we look at a lot of the things that are coming across uh, through Facebook, through Twitter, uh, and we're seeing the reality on the ground. And you have civil society groups and you have individuals on the ground in foreign conflict zones who are putting their lives at risk every day to get the reality out, begging for help. Um, and so what we're trying to do is not distort that in any way, shape, or form. It's actually to present reality. This is the reality on the ground. And, you know, I, I live and breathe this stuff. I, I look at this stuff every day. 
But, you know, as I travel around the United States and I travel around the world talking to communities and we try to talk about this issue, there is reticence because they're not seeing the reality on the ground. They, they see what they see, they, what they want to see. They see what's in the paper in front of them. They turn on the news and they may see some things. But the true reality of what's going on the ground, we try to give them an unfiltered view to say this is what's happening and this is what needs to be counted. And um, again, because of, as you said, you've traveled the world uh, to, to, in, your, in your role. Uh, and again, this would be nothing new to, 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 to posit to you. But do you make the connection where the, those who hold a different view will be saying that, look, even if this is valid, even if this argument is, is correct, even if the, this ISIS or, what, or ISIL or whatever it's called is an aberration, the fact remains that the United States, by its policies with Palestine and other parts of the world and their, 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 their close association with Israel, has festered and created this environment that has cap been capitalized mm -hmm. upon. And therefore, how do you stand on that? How, how do you feel as a, as a Muslim, as a citizen of the yeah. United States, how do you feel as a Muslim when you see, despite that, that, that veto, the, the, the United States not exercising mm -hmm. its veto a couple of weeks ago, right. and we all know what Netanyahu has said right, about right, that, right. but how do you feel as a Muslim to be representing a nation that is seen to be one that has contributed to the situation experienced by people in Palestine. And like, like I said, I, I've traveled the world, I've talked to a lot of communities, and the one thing that, uh, that I, I've really understood is that there's a lot of misconceptions about American foreign policy and about what our role is around the world. And I think my job as a government official is to help break down those stereotypes, break down those misconceptions. And as you get a lot of these conspiracy theories, um, you know, it's our job, and you mentioned Steve Weeks, and Steve's doing a great job here in the embassy, and it's his job to make sure that we push back against these misconceptions and stereotypes by engaging communities. And we engage at their level. I mean, we, we talk to them about these same issues. So all the issues you're bringing up is nothing new to us. Sure. We've, we've had this conversation before, and we will continue to have this conversation because I think that idea that you just espoused, that you know, there's, it's all about American foreign policy, it's inhibiting us from actually addressing the true cause. And, uh, of why people are being radicalized to violence and going over and, and, and going to foreign conflict zones and losing their lives. Um, this is a difficult issue. And to really uh, tackle this issue, you have to look at the research. You have to understand really why people are, are being radicalized to violence. So we're pushing a lot of the research. Don't listen to us. Let's go to the empirical research. And part of the team that we have here, uh, we have individuals who do nothing but research. They're not uh, CT experts. They're not CV experts. They are focused on research. And the one thing that we found is that in addition to this whatever globalized grievance there may be that pushes people along this pathway, there has to be a local connection. There has to be something that, that touches you locally that pushes you further. And that's but, what we have to address. But are you saying that, that and I, I, I'm interested in the phrase you use, the globalized grievance. Uh, are you saying that that is manufactured? Uh, are you saying that it's not real? No, no I, I didn't say that at all. I said, obviously, that's one of the things we have to address. If there are globalized Do you think it's being there, addressed at all by, by the United States government? I definitely think it's being addressed. There are a lot of issues, and I, I don't know if you caught uh, President Obama's uh, farewell address last mm. night, but he touched a lot on a lot of those issues. So there are globalized grievances. And, you know, in America, we have grievances. So it's not anything that's specific to foreign countries. In America, we have uh, discussion and we have debate. So this is nothing new, uh, but it's a matter of just engaging and continuing to engage. Time doesn't allow us to develop that. I really wish we had more time. But, but let's just talk about uh, how have the discussions gone so far? What discussions have you had? If you have yeah. had any discussions with either clerics or those mm -hmm. in, in, in the Muslim community in Trinidad debate? Well, so we've had a, a couple of discussions with uh, the community. We've had uh, discussions with some, uh, some high-level government officials, Minister Dillon, Minister Young. Um, and I think overall it's been absolutely great. It's a, it's a great opportunity to have this engagement. From the Muslim community side, it's, um, you know, there's, there's always this reticence. Uh, again, a lot of the things that you just talked about, there's a reticence to really understand what the issue is. And our focus here is to make sure that they understand through research, through their own qualitative and quantitative research, what is the issue. Um, and so that's where we're also talking to university professors here, researchers, so that they can get more involved in understanding the space. On the other side, on the government side, again, very good conversations with Minister Dillon and Ms. Minister Young, and they've committed to um, addressing this through development of a national CVE action plan that encompasses research, encompasses some of the engagement that we talked about. So uh, I'm optimistic, but I think uh, all of us have a long way to go. 
I'm mean, interested uh, as well I mean, in the couple of minutes that we have left. Uh, your, your, what, what you've gauged uh, as far as the reticence from some members of the Muslim community. Do you appreciate where, whether here or in other, any other jurisdiction, it might be seen as almost a condescending attitude by the United States as saying that, look, you know, we know more about Islam than you do. Uh, and, and therefore, we are here to tell you what is the truth. And I think that's part of that misinformation because we're not here to talk about the truth of Islam. In fact, we, we try not to talk about Islam because, you know, we have certain regulations that we have in place like the Establishment Clause that really disallows us from talking about one particular uh, religion over another. So we do not profess to talk about the true Islam or the real Islam. That is up to our counterparts. That is up to our, uh, the communities that we engage with. And all we try to do is present the information of, uh, or the disinformation that groups like Daesh are putting out there and try to have different ways to address that, be it through religious scholars, community leaders, civil society, or government officials. Final question, I hope you don't take offense at it. Are your parents comfortable with your role in the US government? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, my, my, my parents are very proud of the work that we do, and uh, they know uh, that uh, you know, we, 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 we love the United States. It's given us a lot. It's given them a lot. That They are you know, first generation. Killed a lot of Pakistanis, too. <laughs> What's that? It's killed a lot of Pakistanis. Well, you know, it's, it, 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 our job is to make sure that, uh, that we try to protect communities wherever they are. And, uh, and I found that it's much better to be on the inside trying to shape policy at a very senior level than on the outside you know, trying to bark uh, you know, demands across a, a gate or a wall. Irfan Said, thanks very much Thank for joining us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good, to, good to get your perspective. Uh, Irfan Said offering his own point of view. And hopefully, uh, we're trying to, to, to sort it out as we speak. Uh, we, we might get the on, outgoing uh, U.S. ambassador uh, based in Port of Spain uh, to, to join us. The Trini boy from Laventil uh, on his way out because Barack is on his way out as well. Nice, fancy uh, rhetoric last night. Lots of tears and so on. Uh, let's see if there'll be more tears when Donald Trump walks in or if others who uh, are in Upad Mali Street will be walking out as well on January 20th. Well, We'll find out next week, probably. Uh, but we'll take a break and come back right after that. Oh,